How long does it take you to beat Mass Effect 1 and 2? For me, it usually takes anywhere between 15 to 35 hours, depending on how much side content I complete. But what if I told you these games could be beat in like an hour or an hour and a half? In this video, we're going to take a look at the speedrunning community to see how they are able to complete Mass Effect 1 and 2 with blazing fast times. Specifically, we're going to be watching some clips from the speedrunner Mike Wave, who posted the following times for Mass Effect 1 and 2. We'll just watch the highlights here to keep this video brief and digestible, but if you do want to check out the full runs, I'll link them in the description below, along with Mike's Twitch channel, where he streams a lot of these speedruns live. Without further ado, let's dive into the speedrun of Mass Effect 1. Now the first thing I'm thinking, is he gonna save my homeboy Jenkins? Nope. You really just gonna leave the body there, bro? Okay, interesting path here, skirt around the geth. Oh wow, he just completely skipped Ashley. I might do this on my next run. Not even for a speed run, mind you, just to kick her off my crew. He finished Eden Prime in about 7 minutes, but he still has to watch the cutscenes at the end. This must be painful for the speedrunning community. Never mind, Ashley just shows up anyway. Alright, so I think he has to go meet the council here. He's loading a save up? Again, what is he dude. Oh my god. Dude, where is he? Did he just glitch through the elevator? <laughs> He's walking into some sort of like black void right now. What is this? He's like dropping directly into Korra's den. <laughs> this is crazy! Oh my god, he's in cores that- What? This fist?! <laughs> oh my god! He just drops through the roof right on top of fist like, Surprise, motherfucker! 15 minutes in and he already has tally, but he's completely skipped Garrison Rex. Okay, so this next part says council skip. He hasn't talked to the council at all, by the way. I love how he's just throwing grenades to, like, propel himself forward. Oh my god. What the- <laughs> Oh my god, look at him, dude! This is where Shepard and Garrus went in Mass Effect 3! Oh my god, that's so hilarious. So where is this gonna take him? He's just like glitched into a black void. Oh my God, his clothes just switched. He's on the Normandy, what the f Oh my God, that's so funny. So yeah, that's how he skips the council, huh? Wow. 19 minutes in and he's on Novaria, where he utilizes a few more glitches to get to Benezia in like seven minutes. Dude, I've never seen this part of Novaria before. I have no idea where he is. He's at peak 15 now. Dude, he has no armor. All right, it's time to take on Benezia. Man, even speedrunners get ragdolled during this fight. This is crazy. He's killing the Rachni Queen. You as cold as ice, brother. Just over 31 minutes into the game and Mike completes Novaria, moving on to Pharos next. He's got to speak to Fi Dan here. Bro, you're really not gonna speak to Fi Dan? Wait, what? He's already at the Thorian within the first minute? This is insane. <laughs> Dude, he beat Pharos in like five minutes. This mission always takes me like two hours. And on to Therum we go. At this point, he only has Tally, Caden, and Ashley on the roster. Ah, the classic Mako glitch. I love it, dude. I could never seem to pull this off. I'll have to try it on my next playthrough, maybe for a video or something. So he's got Liara now, and that pretty much just leaves Vermeer, the Council, and Ilos. Vermeer is pretty much business as usual. The Rex confrontation is skipped because he never recruited Rex, and he decides to save Ashley over Caden, and then glitches through a wall to drop directly into the Saren confrontation. He does another glitch on the Citadel to force unlock the Normandy, and then heads to Ilos. Okay, so you gotta see this elevator skip in its entirety, because this is probably the craziest part of the speedrun for me. Yeah, I PB'd with it yesterday, Trent. So 
So after floating his way up to the top, the rest of the mission is pretty linear and normal. He completes Ilos, goes through the conduit, and fights his way to Saren. He convinces Saren to blast himself before opening the station's arms and defeating the Saren husk. Final time, 1 hour, 25 minutes, and 6 seconds. Pretty nice, dude. For Mass Effect 2, Mike completes a New Game Plus run of the game, which allows him to bring in a higher level Commander Shepard, and pretty much skip those early parts where Shepard dies. So he basically starts this run off at the point where Shepard is waking up after the long nap. Mike is also playing as a Vanguard, which allows him to charge forward with the Nova ability. He'll use this to create shortcuts for himself throughout the run. I also noticed that he's able to clip through and scale over many of the barriers in this game. Wow, so he just completely skipped the grenade launcher part here. Dude, he just blasts right through that cutscene. <laughs> okay, so he's on Freedom's Progress already. Dude, this is crazy. Look where he's running, dude. This is insane. And he's done with Freedom Progress in like four minutes. Some of the glitches he pulls off during the Garrus and Morden missions are truly wild, allowing him to breeze through both of these missions in just a few minutes. He also routinely uses the cane to just straight wipe the floor. Alright, he's got the Jador fight now. <laughs> oh my god, he just completely one-shots her, dude. Game over. Okay, so this next part is insane. Watch how he skips through the majority of the Horizon mission. He ends up glitching on top of this thing over here, and then he just walks over and drops into the final arena. Hilariously, he does still have to do the mini-games. The final fight on Horizon is brutal for any playthrough, but for speedrunners, this section can be an absolute death sentence and wreck your entire run. Mike does a pretty good job of dispatching the enemies here under intense pressure, and then perfectly times a cane round to one-shot the Praetorian just as it spawns into the arena. Out of clips. At 100%. I have After Horizon, he mostly completes N7 missions to progress the main story, since they are much shorter than the loyalty missions. He does pick up Kasumi as his seventh squad mate, but Thane, Tally, and Samara do not join the crew. Around 40 minutes into the game, he's already going to get the Reaper IFF. One thing I hadn't realized before is that you can pretty much run past every enemy in this level, provided that you can survive. Within just a few minutes, he's able to speed through the ship and blast through the core with Big Daddy Kane. At just under 49 minutes, Mike launches the final mission. This is where things get a little bit wild because he hasn't completed any loyalty missions or upgraded his ship at all. Jack, Kasumi, and Garrus get obliterated during the approach to the base. Like a good Mass Effect player, he selects Jacob the Vent God Taylor to go into the vents. Hilariously, he just runs past all the vents straight to the final one to complete this section. I didn't even realize that was something you could do. Grunt unfortunately perishes during the long walk because Miranda was chosen as the biotic expert. I think she was the only biotic still alive anyway. The cane and incendiary ammo in the Matic rifle are clutch in clearing this section of combat. Mike finishes the final mission by going to defeat the Human Reaper with Morden and Miranda as his crew. The most impressive part of this to me is how he manages to destroy all four injection tubes in a single round. Shoot the injection tube. So I'm guessing he's just gonna use the cane here. There we go. One shot, I'm dead. No thermal clips. Nice. 101.56. Oh my god. That was pretty good. I was pretty good. Oh, Impressive. Oh, oh, oh my god. Now we're gonna see the cutscenes here. Oh, fat dude, that's fat. Cause I don't think Morden and Miranda are gonna make it. I think Shepard's gonna die too, by the way. I don't think that was, dude, that wasn't as good as my fucking new game run though. Oh my god. This is 41 seconds off, so I'm a best. No, we're at the end of the video. We're not gonna get to see it. 
I must say, I was a little bit disappointed that he didn't show off the final cutscenes of the game here, even though they're technically not part of his speedrun, because I know that Commander Shepard died in this run. There's no way that any of his crew managed to survive at the end. He didn't complete a single loyalty mission. So while this speedrun was top tier, he did get the worst ending of the game, which is kind of hilarious. So there you have it. Mass Effect speedrunning is pretty wild. I had a lot of fun watching these videos, seeing what techniques the speedrunning community employs to complete these games in record time. Big shout out to Mike Wave. Go give him a follow on Twitch. And if you want to see the full versions of both of these speedruns, I've put links in the description for them. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more RPG and commentary videos. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.